When did fake it until you make it backfire? Is anyone on this plane a doctor? Got a job working in an insurance company reviewing contracts. Had no ducking idea what I was doing and thought I could just learn it and I'd be fine eventually. Lasted 6 months and they kicked me out. I hired a Mandarin translator for a game I'm developing. Ran her translations through Google Translate. To find they were a good match. Too good a match. Showed it to a friend of mine who's from China. Told me the translator just Google translated everything and that the end result was barely comprehensible. Got a part time job as a bartender to help with bills. Told them I knew how to bartend. I can pour a whiskey coke and beer so just figured I'd pick up the rest as I went along. First week I was serving to get to know the menu and someone called in sick. Owner makes me bartend. So I'm doing fine. Just beers and a few mixed drinks. Then a party of about 40 people coming from a wedding come in and starts asking for all these different shots. Different specialty drinks. ETC. Totally at my pants. I knew a girl who would apply to jobs she was unqualified for. Including a job at NASA and at Apple. She lied about her qualifications on her resumes. She landed several high paying jobs. But would get fired after a month or two once her co-workers realized she did not have the skills to fulfill her duties. She would boast on Facebook about how she landed her dream job every few months. Not sure what she's doing now since I haven't spoken to her in years. I believe she moved to another country. Oh. And she took credit for the Mars rover and for the Beatles on iTunes. This reminds me of a Tifu post where OP moved to a new neighborhood for just a few months and decided to take some LSD to break it in. OP thought it was a good idea to go for a walk and when he went outside, his new neighbor greeted him. Being on LSD and a bit of an introvert, he avoided conversation by speaking French as he knew enough to get by and did not plan on staying there for an extended period of time. This went on for about 8 months. Longer than he expected to stay there, and eventually the neighbor had a friend of hers over who also spoke French and tried to start up a conversation with him. That's when he was like yay, I don't speak French. Edit, wow. Thanks for my first ever gold and silver kind strangers. A few years ago I got a job interview after months of looking. I was desperate. I thought I was going to be working in the mail room for the city but when I arrived it turned out it was for delivering mail between city offices. Okay. No big deal. I can do that. Well. In my province we have G1. Learners. G2. Still have some restrictions about when who you can drive with. And G. Full license. Well. I needed my full G for the job but hadn't gotten around to doing the test. No big deal. I thought. I'll just go along and schedule a test a sap. Hopefully before any paperwork needs to be done. So I went through the interview and I think I'm home free. But no. They want to do a driver's test right then and there. And I need to present my license to the testing company. Thinking quick. I tell them I don't have my license on me. Well. They need it and they were willing to find a city employee to drive me back out to my house. 30 minutes away. And get it. Backed into a corner I finally have to admit that I don't have my G license. I blurted it out and basically ran out of the office and didn't look back. Still one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. Fire festival definitely comes to mind. Orgasms. If you fake it at first, you just never gonna make it. When someone asks if I've seen a movie and I lie and say yes to fit in. When they ask for my favorite part or my opinion on the part I'm exposed. I work as an accountant with a theater background. I'm 6 years in and I'm working solo with no one above me in the company besides the owners. I have an audit. A 16 million dollar lock to acquire. And another company we just purchased. This is the tipping point I'm sure. Guy I used to work with told me about when he used to work as an electrician apprentice at a plant. When there was nothing to do. Which apparently was most of the time. The lead guy and him would walk out to a random spot in the plant with a ladder a condit bender and a bent piece of condit. Then one of them would stand on top of the ladder and the other on the ground holding the condit and they'd just chit chat all day. If any of the bosses wandered by they'd nod and pass the piece of condit up to the guy on the ladder who would then make a show of trying to fit it in somewhere. Said they both made it through 3 rounds of layoffs doing that. 
Okay. I guess it ultimately didn't backfire. But it's a pretty good story I was told in film school years ago. Back in the 80 stroke 90s. A guy snagged an interview for a camera operating job at a TV production company that was way above his experience level. The interviewer gave him a camera. Said okay. Take this apart and lay it all out for me. You have 20 minutes. And left him there. After panicking for a minute, he walked down the hall. Found a technician working and asked him to take apart the camera for him. Which he did. Interviewer comes back. Says. Good work. Now put it back together. And goes off to put out some other fires. Our guy tracks down the tech. Who obliges again. And he was hired. When I heard this story the guy had worked in the field 15 or so years so I guess things worked out. Went to visit my older cousin in a big city. Small town girl. Before going out. He told me that the friends we would be meeting are super snobby. And would probably make fun of me if I told them I was from small town A. Today I would tell him to get better friends. But when I was 18 I just wanted to fit in. We agree I would tell them I'm from city X. So the blonde bombshell in the group. Six years older. Starts talking to me while my cousin and his friend head off to buy shots. Where are you from? Who am? City X. OMG. Me too. She proceeds to ask me which school I went to. Which coffee shop was my favorite and where my parents work just making polite conversation. Of course. I do the adult thing and confess make up an entire fake life story. My cousin gets back to the table with the shots and I have never been more grateful for the opportunity to put alcohol in my mouth and stop words from coming out. At seeing me knock back my shot like an animal. My cousin forgets our cover story and loudly proclaims good god. You don't have to drink like you do in small town A. Eh? Just chill. I did not look at bombshell for the rest of the night. I have seldom wanted the earth to swallow me as much as I did in that moment. That reminds me of the guy on reddit who pretended to his girlfriend's parents he has never heard of potatoes before. Dating a close friend that I wasn't even remotely attracted to. I thought the feelings that I was supposed to have would kick in. But they didn't. The guys who act like they are ex special forces on the first day of basic training because they were in JROTC in high school. I remember one saying, I've basically already done this every year since I was a freshman. As we got off the bus. Idiot washed out by week 2. I had a job that I was way underqualified for. Yet I still was surprisingly given the offer. 8 months in. The fact really started to show that I wasn't the assumed genius savior the hiring manager thought I was. Fortunately. I got offered a different job by someone who wasn't really desperate to hire. Tried to power my way through undiagnosed PTSD. I got 100x worse. Real recovery does require you to face the difficult situations. But in a specific way. Trying to force yourself to get over it will convince your subconscious that the thing is indeed bad. On the flip side. Laughter yoga is the most effective fake it until you make it I've ever encountered. Pretending to laugh until you feel so ridiculous you really do laugh. Pretty much an instant mood boost. I taught some anatomy and physiology labs to pre-nursing majors. These girls knew more about anatomy and physiology than I did. I'm an expert in ecology. But somehow I got the job of teaching this class. I figured I'd just look at the answers on the worksheets as the semester went on. When I finally got the student feedback. It was a blow to my sense of confidence. About half of them did indeed notice that I had just been looking at the ducking worksheet answers. So I am sort of in this situation now. I know how to do my specific job but due to me being hired late and getting thrown into the job I didn't really on board correctly with the company I actually work for. I work in outreach so I'm off site 10 months year. Well my boss resigned last week and now I'm in limbo cause I have been there long enough where I should know where things are and who is who and how things run but I know nothing and just sort of kept to myself and did my own thing while on site. I'm slightly worried that now that I don't have a direct boss that if I am told to do something I will have no clue how to do it. Not exactly my fault because of the situation but I foresee an awkward conversation in my future. Elizabeth Holmes Theranos. It hasn't yet. Everyone still thinks I'm human. Pretending to be happy and having it backfire on your actual mental health because it takes so much energy and you feel like a fraud. 
been faking stuff for so long to not act depressed that I no longer have any sort of self-identity or concept of what I want in life. What goals to pursue. Or even who I am. Worked with a successful guy whose reputation was he spends 50% of his time on the job working on his old job. And 50% on his next job was true. Unfortunately he piloted his plane into a set of power lines. I just heard in a podcast about a guy who lived on an army base for 3 years posing as a soldier until he got caught due to drinking and driving. The guy apparently was well known and went so far as to brief incoming soldiers on and even responded to a bomb threat since he posed as an EOD tech. The guy responds to bomb threats and gets caught because of a DUI. Law. That I was relaxed and chill with being a dad. When he came out I died a little inside and did not know what to do. It eventually worked out when I lost my job and became a stay at home dad for 3 months and now that boy loves me more than his mom. How does that backfire? I can't take a writ alone. My 2 year old has to be in there like a ducking air marshal and his prisoner. I faked being good at computer science until I graduated from college with a computer science degree and didn't get a job lol. Not me. But it backfires all the time in MLM's pyramid schemes. They actually tell you to fake it till you make it. But no matter how many times you lie on social media about being a boss babe, you will never make it. A lot of the big instances of fraud came from fake it until you make it mentality. Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos were faking the technology until they could get it to work. Fire Festival was faking it until they could get the money together. Anna Delve intended to make it one day but she ponzied her way through until she would get there. DR. Christopher Dunch, DR. Death, was a horrible back surgeon but he kept operating and working on patients anyway. I tend to think fraudsters don't really intend to hurt other people. They are just grossly incompetent and trying to cover their asses.